You're lying in bed, staring at the ceiling, thinking about what you want for breakfast. Suddenly, your arm reaches over and grabs your phone without you even telling it to. Your brain just sent a secret message to your arm. And boom, phone acquired. Pretty cool, right? But what if I told you that scientists are working on a way to let you control your phone, your computer, or even a robot arm just by thinking about it? No hand required. Today, I'll explain Neuralink, the brain chip that might let you text with your thoughts like you're five years old. And by the end of this, you'll understand whether this is the coolest thing ever or something that should make you hide under your blanket. It turns out your brain is basically a super complicated computer made of squishy stuff. Shocker, I know. It's not just a gray lump sitting in your head doing nothing, and it's not a magic crystal ball that makes thoughts appear out of nowhere. What it is actually is billions and billions of tiny electrical messengers that are constantly sending lightning fast notes to each other about everything that you do, think, and feel. Imagine your brain is like the world's busiest post office, but instead of a mail truck, it uses tiny lightning bolts to deliver messages. These aren't just any lightning bolts though. These are special super tiny lightning bolts that carry important information like move your finger, remember where you put your keys, or that pizza smells amazing. This electrical messaging system is what scientists call neural activity. Say it with me, neural activity. It sounds fancy, but it just means brain electricity doing stuff. And your brain is doing this electrical stuff literally all the time, even when you're sleeping. It never takes a break, not even for a second. Now, these tiny lightning bolts, also known as electrical signals, are constantly zapping around between special brain cells called neurons. And think of neurons like tiny little people who are really, really good at passing notes. Except instead of paper notes, they pass electrical messages. And instead of using their hands, they use special tentacle-like arms called dendrites and axons. Each neuron can talk to thousands of other neurons at the same time. It's like having a conversation with a thousand people simultaneously, except everyone is speaking in electricity instead of words. So, your brain makes these tiny lightning messages. But where do they go? Well, they travel along special highways called neural pathways. These pathways connect different parts of your brain to each other, and they also connect your brain to the rest of your body through your spinal cord and nerves. When you want to wiggle your toe, your brain sends a lightning message down the highway to your toe. And when you touch something hot, your toe sends a lightning message back up the highway to your brain saying, Hey, that's hot! It's like a two-way electrical conversation happening faster than you can blink. Now, let's talk about Neuralink. Neuralink is a company started by a guy named Elon Musk, who you might know as the person who makes electric cars and rockets. But instead of making cars that drive themselves, he wants to make a tiny computer chip that can listen to your brain's electrical conversations. It's like having a super tiny spy that sits in your brain and eavesdrops on all the lightning messages that your neurons are sending to each other. Now, here's where it gets really interesting. The Neuralink chip is smaller than a coin, only about the size of a large button on your shirt. This tiny chip has even tinier wires attached to it, thinner than human hair. And these ultra-thin wires, called threads, are designed to be gently placed near your neuron so they can detect the tiny lightning bolts that your brain cells are sending. It's like having microscopic antennas that can pick up your brain's electrical radio station. And here's where the magic happens. Think about it like this. When you want to move your hand, your brain sends specific patterns of lightning messages. These patterns are like a secret code that means move hand. The Neuralink chip learns to recognize these secret codes, and once it figures out the pattern for move hand, it can detect when you're thinking about moving your hand, even if you don't actually move it. It's like the chip becomes fluent in your brain's electrical language. The chip doesn't just listen to your brain messages though, it can also send information back to a computer or phone through a wireless connection. So when you think move cursor to the left, the chip detects that thought pattern and wirelessly tells your computer, hey, this person wants to move the cursor to the left. The computer then moves the cursor, just like you used a mouse, except you used your thoughts instead of your hand. Now this is completely different from how you normally control devices. Usually your brain sends a message to your hand, your hand moves the mouse, and the mouse sends a signal to the computer, and then the computer moves the cursor. That's like playing telephone through your body. But with Neuralink, your brain can talk directly to the computer, skipping all the middle steps. It's like having a direct phone line between your thoughts and your devices. Now, you might wonder how they get this tiny chip into your brain, and that is where things get a bit intense. Like, major surgery intense. Remember, your brain is protected by your skull, which is basically a bone helmet that keeps your squishy brain safe. To put in the Neuralink chip, doctors have to carefully cut a small hole in your skull, about the size of a quarter, then using a special robot that's more precise than any human hand, they insert those ultra-thin threads into specific areas of your brain where they can best detect the electrical messages. 
the robot that does this insertion is incredibly important because, well, your brain is super delicate. If you poke it in the wrong place or too hard, you could damage important functions. It's like trying to thread a needle while riding a roller coaster, except the needle is microscopic and the consequences are your ability to think, move, or remember things. The robot can place these threads with precision that is measured in micrometers. That's smaller than the width of a spider's web. Have you ever wondered what it would feel like to have a computer chip in your brain? Surprisingly, it probably wouldn't actually feel like anything at all. I mean, your brain doesn't have any pain sensors inside of it, which is why your brain surgeons can sometimes operate on awake patients. The chip itself is designed to be biocompatible, meaning that your body won't reject it like a splinter. It's made from materials that can safely stay in your body for years without causing problems. So let's go through what this could actually do for people. The first and most important use is helping people who are paralyzed. Imagine someone who was in an accident and can no longer move their arms or legs. Well, their brain still knows how to send move arm messages, but those messages can't get through because of damage to their spinal cord. It's like having a working phone, but a cut phone line. Neuralink could bypass that cut line by reading the move arm thoughts directly from the brain and using them to control a robotic arm or a computer sensor. Early trials have shown people with paralysis learning to control computer sensors and type messages just by thinking about moving their hands. One person was able to play simple computer games and send text messages to family and friends, all without moving a muscle. Now, for someone who hasn't been able to communicate easily for years, this is literally life-changing. It gives them back a way to interact with the world and express themselves. But Neuralink's ambitions go way beyond helping paralyzed people, though that alone would be amazing. Elon Musk talks about eventually using the technology to treat depression, anxiety, addiction, and even memory loss. The idea is that if we can read and influence brain activity, we might be able to correct problems in the brain's electrical patterns. It's like having a mechanic for your brain's electrical system. Some scientists think we might eventually be able to upload and download information directly to our brains. Imagine being able to learn a new language by downloading it like an app or backing up your memories to a computer so you never forget them. I know it sounds like science fiction, but the basic technology of reading and writing to the brain is what Neuralink is working on right now. Now, here's where things get a little bit scary, and why some people think that this might be more like hacking your brain than helping it. Your brain contains literally everything that makes you, well, you. Your memories, your personality, your deepest thoughts, your fears, your dreams, it's all stored in those electrical patterns. If a computer chip can read those patterns, wants to stop someone from accessing information you never wanted to share. Think about it like this. Your brain is like the most private diary ever written, except it's written in electricity instead of words. Neuralink is like giving someone the ability to read that diary. Even if the people making Neuralink have good intentions, what happens if hackers figure out how to break into the system? I mean, could someone steal your thoughts? Could they change your memories? Could they control your actions? Though it may sound like it, these aren't just science fiction worries. They are real questions that scientists and ethicists are trying to figure out. There's also the question of who gets access to this technology. I mean, brain chips are going to be expensive, at least at first. Will only rich people be able to enhance their brains while everyone else gets left behind? What if having a brain chip becomes necessary to get certain jobs? I mean, it could create a world where people are divided into the enhanced and the unenhanced, which sounds pretty unfair. Another concern is what we call the upgrade problem. Your smartphone gets software updates all the time, and sometimes those updates change how things work or even remove features that you liked. Now, imagine if your brain chip got an update that changed how you think or feel. What if the company that makes your brain chip goes out of business? I mean, what if they decide to start charging monthly fees for your thoughts to work properly? Now, I know these might sound silly, but they are serious questions when we're talking about putting computers in people's brains. Some scientists worry that we don't understand the brain well enough yet to be putting computer chips in. I mean, the brain is incredibly complex, more complex than any computer we've ever built. We're still discovering new things about how it works every day. It's like trying to fix a machine when you only understand about how 10% of that part works. What if the brain chip interferes with functions that we don't even know about yet? But here's the thing. For people who are paralyzed, blind, or suffering from severe depression, these risks might be worth taking. I mean, if you couldn't move your body or communicate with your family, wouldn't you be willing to try something that might give you those abilities back, even if it came with some risks? It's easy to worry about the scary possibilities when your brain is working fine, but for people whose brains aren't working the way they want them to, Neuralink might represent hope. The current version of Neuralink is still very basic. I mean, the people testing it can move computer cursors and type simple messages, but they can't download kung fu skills or telepathically order pizza. 
The technology is advancing quickly, but we're still probably decades away from the more science fiction-like applications. Right now, it's more like a very sophisticated medical device than a brain-computer merger. The scientists are also working on making the procedure safer and less invasive. Future versions might not require cutting open your skull. Instead, they might use tiny robots that could inject through blood vessels, or they might develop ways to read brain signals from outside the skull entirely. The goal is to make brain-computer interfaces as safe and easy as getting a vaccine. Now, you might wonder if these brain chips can make people smarter. And that's a tricky question, because intelligence is complicated. The chips might help people access information faster or perform certain tasks more efficiently, but they probably won't make you fundamentally smarter in the way that we usually think about intelligence. It's more like giving your brain a really good internet connection than upgrading your brain's processor. The regulatory process for brain chips, though, is incredibly strict. Before Neuralink or any similar technology becomes widely available, it has to go through years of testing to prove that it is safe and effective. Government agencies like the FDA carefully review every aspect of the technology, from the materials used to make the chip to the long-term effects of having it in your brain. This process is slow and sometimes frustrating, but it's designed to protect people from technologies that might cause more harm than good. So, let's go over the big picture again. Neuralink is a tiny computer chip with ultra-thin wires that can detect the electrical signals in your brain. It learns to recognize patterns in these signals that correspond to your thoughts and intentions. It can then wirelessly transmit these patterns to external devices, allowing you to control computers, phones, or robotic limbs with your thoughts alone. The potential benefits are enormous, especially for people with disabilities, but so are the potential risks to privacy, security, and human equality. Right now, Neuralink is primarily focused on medical applications, helping people who have lost the ability to move or communicate due to injury or disease. But the long-term vision is much broader, potentially including treating mental health conditions, enhancing human capabilities, and even creating direct brain-to-brain -brain communication. Whether this is a mind-blowing breakthrough or a dangerous step toward hacking human brains probably depends on how the technology is developed, regulated, and implemented. Like any powerful technology, it could be used for tremendous good or significant harm. The key, though, is making sure that we develop it thoughtfully, with strong safeguards for privacy and security, and with careful attention to how it might affect society as a whole. So, to recap for my five-year-old brain trust, Neuralink is a tiny computer chip that listens to your brain's electrical messages and can use them to control devices with your thoughts. It could help paralyzed people move robotic arms or let anyone control computers without touching them. But it also raises big questions about privacy, security, and fairness. It's not magic. It's just really, really advanced technology that reads the lightning messages in your brain. Pretty wild, right? But now you know enough to decide whether you think it's amazingly cool or slightly terrifying. Or maybe both.